If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. On November 8th of this year, Donald Trump won the election for President of the United States. The day before, I uploaded a video that was supposed to be two flavor decks playing against each other. It was a Hillary Clinton deck, it was the Senate, blue-white Senate, uh, featuring cards like Azores, Elocutors, uh, Bribery, uh, what was another one? Gifts Ungiven, seems like lobbying. So that was the theme for that deck, but then for Donald Trump, I created a wall deck. Because if you know one thing about Donald Trump, other than that somehow he's the President of the United States, you know his stance on walls. So it was not meant to be a serious deck, <laughs> not really, I'm not making this to win any Pro Tour, rip modern Pro Tour, win any FNMs or PPTQs or whatnot. But this was meant as a flavor deck, but it's not purely flavor. If it were just flavor, then you'd be seeing nothing but walls and lands, and that doesn't make for a competitive deck at all. But instead, we have a deck that starts with the premise of, let's make walls, and then use them to fuel a win. And we will show you in just a moment, we will show you, we'll see two uh, win conditions in this deck. So first, let's give you the means to the end. Walls is a little bit of a misnomer. It's actually uh, tribal defenders, if you will, but since most of them are walls, we'll call it the former, but however, this one, the most important one, is not. This is Axbang Guardian. It's a defender that lets you add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool, where X is the number of creatures with defender you control. It has a bit of a neighbor. It has overgrown battlement. Now this one costs two mana instead of three, it does the same thing, except it has one extra point of toughness, which means it survives bolt, but it also only generates green mana, not mana of any color. Axbane Guardian is significantly more important for the deck, and one reason why this absolutely cannot be a competitive deck is because Axbane Guardian has three toughness, and you'll see why that matters so much in just a moment. Next we have, not four, but three, Vine Trellis. Strictly worse Overgrown Battlement. They're both walls. They have the same mana cost. This one will only add green to your mana pool. Just a single green mana. So obviously not as good. This is filler. This is, we need more walls that make mana, therefore we have this one. If you're going to try to take slots out of the deck, probably, almost certainly, Vine Trellis is the first to go, but be careful, because you need a critical mass of defenders for Overgrown Battlement and Axbane Guardian, although there are plenty of good replacements. Next we have, as yet another wall that makes mana, Wall of Roots. So this one actually doesn't use it or make mana by tapping, it's a 0-5 for 2 mana. You put the antiquated 0-1 or minus 0-1 zero minus one counter on it to add green. Now, because we're playing another card, its interaction with Wall of Roots makes it more worthwhile. It's actually probably better in the deck than Vine Trellis, to be honest. Next we have Wall of Omens, for that much needed card draw that also happens to be on a wall. Now here are all of the main walls in the deck. For our utility, and we haven't gotten to win conditions yet, but we'll be there in just a second. For utility we have four Paths to Exile, sort of speaks for itself, we need some removal, especially against low to the ground decks. And we have four Cord of Calling. And this is why the Wall of Roots can be so good. You can generate green mana and you can tap it, so effectively it taps for two for Cord of Calling. Which seems pretty good. Now obviously you can Cord for any of these, uh, especially the x -Bang Guardian, but that's not the best way to go about it. That's not the most explosive way to go about it. I've given you the base of the deck, now let me give you how it goes off. Ready? So, so far it's just green and white, but we also have blue in the deck. This is Bant Walls, if you will. That means we're talking Drift of Phantasms. It is a defender, it is not a wall. It flies, it's a 0-5. That's not what we care about. Transmute. 
Pay one blue blue. Discard this card. Search your library for a card with the same CMC as this card. Reveal it, then put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Play only as a sorcery. Okay, so that seems interesting, right? It's not exactly muddle the mixture. It won't get uh, Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry, but it's CMC three. It will get us win conditions. Obviously, it gets you the X Bang Guardian, and that's one part of it. But what we care about is freed from the real. This is an aura. You enchant it to a creature, and then it has two abilities. Pay blue, tap enchanted creature. This helps if you need to hit your opponent's creature. Or blue, untap enchanted creature. And that's what we really care about. So, you get your Axe Bane Guardian. And you give it a freed from the real. Now, as long as you have at least two defenders out, Axe Bane Guardian says it will generate X mana, say blue mana, uh, for each defender you control. So, with Axe Bane and, say, another Axe Bane, tap it, make blue, blue. And then use Freed from the Reel to untap it for blue. That means that blue is still floating. You can do this any number of times to make as much blue mana as you want. And then filter that mana using its ability as well. Um, and just you have as much mana of any combination of colors as you need. Once you have infinite mana, well we do have uh, some ways to win. But first, before we get there, we also have Heliod's Pilgrim. Now... You can transmute for Freed from the Real, but if you don't happen to have a Drift of Phantasms in your hand, then the way that you would go about searching out Freed from the Real is with Heliod's Pilgrim. And if you don't have Heliod's Pilgrim in your hand, then you use Court of Calling. So effectively, that gives you nine ways to go and find Freed from the Real, plus the three Freed from the Reals themselves. Say that five times quickly. So again, Drift, Drift can transmute for Freed, Heliod's Pilgrim can get Freed, Court of Calling can get Pilgrim can get freed. Complicated? Uh, a bit. Now, once we have infinite mana, as far as I'm aware, at least in modern, this is the only creature that does what we need it to do. We have Scholar of Athreos. Yes, a Theros Common is showing up. Once again, Transmutes for three, or Transmute three will get it, so that's criteria number one. It has to be CMC three. Criteria number two, it has to be a creature. Criteria three, it has to have a, an ability that requires mana and not tapping. Number four, that ability has to kill the opponent, preferably by dumping infinite mana into him. So this fulfills all of those requirements, and it survives lightning bolts. Not that that matters all too much. If you're going to bolt, you bolt the X-Bang Guardian, but it's there. So you can cord for Scholar, you can transmute for Scholar, but once you have it there, you play it using your infinite mana, and then just dump infinite mana into it. In before, someone in the comments says, wait, there's no such thing as infinite mana in the game. Yeah, I know, arbitrarily high number, but effectively, that means infinite. The judge will make you pick a number, but because that number can be anything you want, as high as you want, you all know what I'm saying. Uh, now, let's say that for whatever reason you can't use this combo. Say your opponent dropped a, uh, I don't know, a Phyrexian Revoker or a Pithing Needle or something like that that keeps you from going off with this combo. Well, you also have a Spawn Sire of Ulamog. What in God's name? So, you can make a bunch of mana using Axbane Guardian and Overgrown Battlements. This is just a ton of mana between them. And you can get up to 10 pretty easily with Spawn Sire of Ulamog. But wait, I hear you say, couldn't you just get the Eldrazi themselves? And yes, I suppose you could. Uh, but, the reason I play Spawn Sire is that if you say Cord for Emrakul, well, you don't get the cast trigger. If you use Spawn Sire's 20, <laughs> then you cast any number of Eldrazi cards from outside of the game, which in a sanctioned game means your sideboard. Uh, if you don't believe me, check Gatherer, the ruling on it for that. Uh, hopefully, I remember to leave a link in the description below about that. Uh, yeah, and in an unsanctioned game, it's just your collection. So if you want to take. No, don't be that guy. If you happen to stock up on a bunch of Emrakuls, bad example, it's legendary. If you happen to stock up on a bunch of Hands of Emrakul, wow. But I, I suppose you could. And that's uh, that's an alternate way that you can go about winning. You can cord for Spawn Sire and go off that way. Other options, obviously, Grizzle Brand would be good, but it's black mana, so if you just have the Overgrown, that won't do it. Um... You could also go for Iona, same problem, but with white. 
You can go with not Crater Hoof Behemoth. <laughs> These are defenders. That doesn't work. But I guess Terastodon, maybe. I don't know. There, there are a number of ways that you could go about doing it. Spawn Sire, just to be cute. I don't know how it fits flavorfully, but then again, Scholar of Athreos definitely doesn't fit in flavorfully. Uh, next, for some just random utility cards, we have Eternal Witness. Uh, just, if you need to cord for regrowth, then Eternal Witness is your gal. And then, in addition, uh, we have, to fight remove a little bit, we have Jeskai Barricade. Flash, Defender, when it enters the battlefield, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. If they try to target your Axe Guardian, you can save it by unsummoning it. Uh, you can also get a Wall of Roots, bring it back so that when you play it again, it doesn't have counters on it. Wall of Omens to draw more cards. Eternal Witness to uh, regrowth again. Heliath's Pilgrim, uh, go and get another Free from the Real. Scholar of Athreos to save it. You get the idea. This is what Barricade is for. And yes, it has flash, but also we can just cord for it, just raw cord to get it out. Now, this is 39, so we have 21 lands in the deck. And by the way, uh, the sideboard is definitely not complete. This was made for a very casual game between uh, my friend and I. Uh, we have <laughs> Emrakul the Ants Torn and Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger in the sideboard. And that's it, just, you know, Spawn Sire of Ulamog uh, targets. Four lands. We have one Ancient Ziggurat, just makes five colors, but only for creatures. But better, this is why we run uh, Vine Trellis instead of, say, Sylvan Caryatid. We have four Cavern of Souls. So if you don't happen to have Cavern, Sylvan Caryatid is just better. It's just better. But because Vine Trellis is a wall, we run it instead. We don't have to, but then again, don't take this deck too seriously. It's definitely not meant seriously. Uh, eight green fetches. Doesn't matter which green fetches. And you can do seven if you add one more basic land in. Uh, which brings me to my next pick, which is two basic forest. Forest is what matters the most in this deck. Uh, you could also add in one plains, one island, or both. Uh, the island helps with Drift of Phantasms Transmute, or Freed from the Real. Uh, the Plains would help with Wall of Omens, Path to Exile. You get the idea. And then we have three Breeding Grounds for Transmute. Additionally, we have two Temple Gardens that we can fetch. And last, probably not least, we have just a one of Horizon Canopy. Poke ourselves to add mana, or we can use it just for some draw power. And it gives us the option. It makes, if we go to Cyborg Crucible uh, of Worlds, a little bit better. So this not-so-serious deck at all is what I have for uh, post-election 2016. Mostly a flavor deck. Obvious improvements are obvious. So if you have any suggestions, you're probably right. <laughs> I mean, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you've seen a deck like this before, I'm sorry. I did. I made this up on my own, I promise. I, I actually tried to find the Scholar combo, and I couldn't find anyone else that did. So, yeah, if you watch this video, you're a little bit smarter. I hope. You've seen something that's probably never going to come up in any real deck ever. But yes, yeah, Scholar of Athreos is the only 3CMC creature with a non-tap ability that can kill the opponent by dumping infinite mana into it. Ta-da! At least in modern. May not be true of Legacy. And, uh, yeah, on a related note, Donald Trump is president, so, uh, that means that my, my deck video, my duel between Clinton's deck and Trump's deck, I have a 100% accuracy rating on who will actually win, then again, the sample size is one, but in four years, maybe I'll make another of these. Alright, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye, Magic Community.